Hey y'all, in this video we're going to go over the notes for momentum and impulse. All right, so first up is momentum. Momentum is a measure of how difficult it is to change the motion of an object. It depends on the object's mass and the velocity. For instance, if you have um, a tennis ball and a bowling ball, um, the bowling ball is heavier and that's going to automatically give it more momentum, even if they're going at the same speed. Um, likewise, if you think of, say, a baseball, one going 5 miles per hour versus one going 90 miles per hour, that 90 mile per hour baseball is going to have more momentum. Right? The formula for momentum is momentum equals mass times velocity. It's shorthand is written as P equals MV. Never really looked into why they chose a P, but that's what scientists picked because um, M was already taken by mass. Um, the unit for momentum is kilograms times a meter per second, and we get those units just from the two things we're multiplying because mass will be in kilograms, velocity is meters per second. So there's not its own unique unit for momentum, right? So let's work through an example problem. So in this problem, we have calculate the momentum of a three kilogram ball moving through the air at 15 meters per second. So we've got our formula. We're going to plug in the mass, which was 3 kilograms. We'll plug in the velocity of 15 meters per second. We would multiply those out in the calculator, and we get 45 kilograms times a meter per second as our final answer. All right, so that's pretty straightforward and not overly challenging, I don't think. All right. Next up is our law of conservation of momentum. It's very similar to the law of conservation of energy and conservation of um, mass laws. Um, it simply states that when there's no external forces working, the momentum of a system remains unchanged. So whatever the momentum there was in the beginning is what there's going to be in the end. And this will come up when we get to collisions in the next set of notes that will look at the total collision um, momentum before a collision and after a collision between two objects. All right. So next up is impulse. Um, for any object, the momentum changes when your velocity will change, and this causes an acceleration. This change in momentum depends on how much force acts on the object and for how much how much time it acts for. So for instance, like if you're um, like pushing on a grocery cart at the store um, and you just apply a lot of force for just like one second, the cart will like, and you let go, the cart's gonna like go down the aisle. If you apply that force for longer, um, then it's going to go farther, right? It's going to have a greater change in momentum, right? So the greater the impulse exerted on the object, the greater the change in momentum is going to be. So if you're applying a greater force or for a longer time, that's going to cause a greater impulse, and which is then also called a greater change in momentum, right? There is a formula for impulse. It's pretty easy. It's Impulse equals force times time. Uh, so again, you're just multiplying two things together, so that's pretty easy to do. Um, the J here is um, a variable they scientists picked for impulse. I never really looked into why they picked a J, but that's what they picked. So your formula is J equals F times T. All right. So let's go through an example. Determine the impulse experienced by a 110 kilogram football player that encounters a 1500 newton force for 0.5 seconds. So we're going to take our fo impulse formula. We're going to plug in the, the force first, which up here was 1500 times time of 0.5 seconds. You'll notice that we had some extra information in the problem of 110 kilograms. We don't even need that for this problem. Um, it's just there just because. All right. And then, um, so going back to this, we'll get multiply 1500 times 0 0.5, and that gives us 750. And then our units, which I didn't talk about on the last slide, um, for impulse, the units are newtons times a second. It's a, um, just like similar to what momentum was. It's just the two units you're multiplying. So in this case, we're multiplying newtons, or we're multiplying seconds, and those don't cancel out. So it gives us newtons times a second. Right? Um, that's it. Let me know if you guys have any questions.